Okay, if the simulation isn't working properly for you, then you can use this video to collect the data that you need to complete the lab. I'm gonna actually just work through the lab and kind of show the data collection on the uh, screen here. So the first thing um, in the lab is it kind of orients us to the simulation. And so you can see up here is the, the first panel simulation, the visualization. You can see the stars here on the left and the planet is right here. And when it's inside the habitable zone, it looks like Earth. But if you drag it out, it freezes because um, it's too cold, right? And if you bring it in, it kind of like turns into a desert because it's too hot. And so um, if I keep dragging it, I can actually kind of scale the whole solar system here further and further out. And uh, in fact, I can just zoom in and out that same way. Okay, so that's just kind of orientation on the left. We can turn on some scales. And here on the right, I can choose either um, specific planetary systems that have been discovered, um, or I can just choose none selected and I can set it up for any mass star and any planet distance. And so this is actually the settings for the Earth. Um, let's see, the bottom panel here is the timeline simulation. So stars change over time and that impacts the habitable zone because a star ages it actually gets warmer and so uh, this simulator includes that right so the habitable zone moves as the as the star ages and that's illustrated right here in this time since star form system formed okay initially it's in m years which is millions of years and then it turns into giga years which is billions of years all right and it goes all the way until the star dies you can see the star starts getting really big um, towards the end of its life and then ultimately it, it dies. And again, that impacts the, the habitable zone. Okay, I think that's the parts of the simulator. Now, um, the first data we're asked to collect, you should, if you're using this video to help you finish the lab, you should be read, like right now you would pause and make sure you're reading through the lab. I'm not gonna like explain the entire lab, I'm just gonna show the data collection. So the first table, um, you're asked to find the inner and outer boundary. And so I'm gonna just uh, drag this and I'm gonna allow you to find those values. Um, so that planet distance is given right here. So that's the uh, inner boundary. And then the outer boundary of the habitable zone is right here, okay? And with that, you should be able to then calculate the width. Okay, um, for the second question, you're asked to, uh, you should read through the question, and then you're asked to complete a table, and this involves a number of values that need to be entered, right? So I'm gonna go through and do those. The first value is a star mass of 0 0.3 solar masses. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And you're asked to find the stellar luminosity, which is right here. I'm not gonna mark it for you every time. Um, and then the inner boundary, that's what I'll help you with because you need the simulator to find it. So the inner boundary is right there. Again, the inner boundary value is down here. That's the planet distance. And then the outer boundary is right here. Of course, you can pause this video if you need to write these down. There's the outer boundary. Okay, and then you calculate the width. All right, let's go to the next values. I'm gonna do these a little faster here, 0.7. We have the luminosity, the inner boundary, and the outer boundary. Okay, there. Okie dokie, and now we have the next mass, 1.0. Inner boundary, there, we have the luminosity, and we have the outer boundary. Luminosity, outer boundary, okay. Two solar masses. Okay, inner boundary. And outer boundary. Okay, there's the outer boundary four solar masses. Okay, there's the inner boundary 
and the outer boundary. All right, and hopefully you're catching the luminosity there too. All right, and then eight solar masses. Okay, luminosity is getting big. The inner boundary is right there. The outer boundary is right there. Okay, and undoubtedly you're seeing here that as you get a really massive star, really only 15 times more massive than the sun, this habitable zone is moving really far out. So uh, there's the luminosity. Here is the inner diameter or inner, inner uh, distance of the habitable zone and the outer. Okay, now that's the data that you need to complete that second table. You'll have to calculate the widths of those, uh, of those habitable zones. And then you'll have some questions to answer. So you can look over that table and answer those questions. In this video though, so you might wanna pause the video. I'm gonna skip ahead now though to the next period of data collection, which is gonna ask you to go to 51 peg, 51 pegasi. All right, so there's our settings. Um, and it's asking you to kind of zoom out. So this is, I'm looking at question five now. You're gonna zoom out and compare this planet to our solar system. So I'm gonna zoom out. This is only one planet in this system, 51 peg, and that planet is denoted with the letter B. And you'll see that it's way closer to the star than Mercury. So Earth's uh, planets are here, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. That's our solar system. Okay, so it's gonna ask you to kind of compare the orbit of that planet to, um, to our solar system. And then, of course, it tells you how big that planet is as well. It's half the mass of Jupiter. So it's, it's essentially a gas giant. All right. And so then it asks if it's likely um, to have life on it. Um, it's important to keep in mind that it's also a, a really massive planet in addition to being really close to the star. Okay. So um, there's a couple more questions. Okay. Now we're going to choose a different system. Um, it asks you to look at Gliese 581. So again, you maybe need to pause the video and answer those other questions, but um, when you wanna to go to Gliese 581, here it is. And um, it uh, shows you, you know what? There's no questions that you need to answer uh, with Gliese 41, 581. So we're not even gonna do that one. Okay, so um, let's see. If you answer your questions, okay, the next section that you might need some data for is related to the time evolution of the habitable zones. And um, so now this is where we're looking at this timeline down here at the bottom. All right, so we're gonna set this up. Now I, I'm reading through this section. You should read it as well until you get to like question eight. Um, and so I am setting it up for one solar mass and a distance of one AU. So this is like our earth, right? And um, it's asking me to start it um, right at zero and then drag it to four, drag time forward to 4.6 billion years, which is 4.6 giga years. Alrighty. And um, so the question becomes now, how much longer will Earth be in the habitable zone? And so I'm gonna move this um, slider until Earth is no longer in that habitable zone. And you can see that that happens right about there, which is around 5.45 giga years. So that's 5.45 billion years, um, alrighty. So that is useful, okay. And then it asks the total lifetime of the sun. Okay, and the simulation provides that for us. That's all the way up to here when our sun um, becomes a white dwarf, right there. Okay, which the simulation gives as 12.0 giga years. Okay, so you can pause it there and continue reading through um, the remainder of that section. And then we get up to a table. Um, associated uh, right before question 11. So this is after question 10. And um, this is now asking us to find, okay, we're gonna set this up for a variety of, of stellar masses. So 
the initial stellar mass is this one's given to us um, in the table. But uh, we can do it anyway so that we can make sure we're understanding this. So if the star mass is 0 0.3, um, I'm going to find the original distance, the initial distance, um, 0.157 here. It's the outer distance is what I want, right? So this is like we're trying to find the, the longest that this planet could be in the habitable zone because that's like the most amount of time that we have for life to develop. If it's not in the habitable zone, then life, there's just no time, right? Um, and so we're gonna try to find how long is this planet gonna be in the habitable zone uh, if the star is 0.3 solar masses. So we're starting at zero, we're putting it on the outer edge to give us the most amount of time. And so uh, again, this one's in the table, but the distance is about 0 0.158. And then the time that it will be in the table, I'm going to figure that out by sliding all the way on our timeline until the planet exits the habitable zone on the other end. And you can see that's approximately 380, I believe it shows in the table. Here you see it's 378. Okay, so that's the amount of time that it spent inside the habitable zone. We're going to do that again for a few other uh, stellar masses. So if I have 0.7 uh, solar mass star, I'm going to go to the outer edge, which is a distance of 0.503 AU. And now I'm going to see how much time it's in there. I slide the slider until it exits the front there. Boom. All right. And that gives me to 29.7 giga years or 29.7 billion years. Okay. Now we're going to switch this to one solar mass. Got to go find that habitable zone. All righty. Right there. A distance of 1.17 AU at the start. And how long will it be in there? I'm going to go all the way till it exits. There, yeah. And I got 8.21 giga years. So 8 billion years. All right. And now I'm going to move it to two solar masses. And now I'm going to find that habitable zone again. Way out here. Okay. And now I'm going to... Um, see the distance is 5.58 AU and now let's see how long it stays in there Whoa, kind of jumps around doesn't it as that star is kind of dying we'll find the last possible age here oh that doesn't look right well that's tricky we'll give it right we'll give it right there close enough okay that's 1.16 uh, giga years or billion years um, okay, and then the next one is four solar masses. So you see what's happening, right? As the star gets more massive, the habitable zone moves out. But what's happening is it's getting less time in the habitable zone. And the reason for that is because massive stars change actually very quickly. So planet distance now for this one is 21.3 AU. And the time it spends on the habitable zone is just, uh, let's see, 195 million years. Um, so that in terms of giga years would be 0.195. And now for an eight solar mass star, it's a bigger habitable zone, but the planet is in it for less time. So strange, okay, so now we're way out at 71 AU and we're only in the habitable zone for about 32 million years. Um, so 0 0.032. Now, again, the whole point here, right, is like if, if life on this planet only has 32 million years, that's not enough time for it to for complex life to develop, we assume, because it took much longer for complex life on Earth. Okay, last one. 15 star masses, solar masses, outer rim here, 189 AU. And now the time... Uh, in the habitable zone, 11 million years or 0 0.011 giga years. All right, with that data table, you should be able to address uh, question 11. All right, uh, you can maybe pause it, read through that title locking section, and then we'll collect uh, a little bit of data that we need um, to do that. 
Okay, so to collect the data for title locking, what we're going to do is um, set it to the, the, the stellar mass that's given in the table. And we're going to put this planet right in the middle of that habitable zone. So for 0.3 solar mass star, um, it is tidally locked. And we can see that because it has this dashed line. The side closest to the star is going to get fried. The side farthest away is permanent midnight and shadow. So it's going to be frozen. So that one is tidally locked. If we switch now to a one half solar mass star, we can see right in the middle of the habitable zone, it is also tidally locked. If we go to a 0.8 solar mass star, right in the middle of the habitable zone, we see it is not tidally locked. Okay, and then of course, for a one solar mass star, like our sun, thankfully, right in the middle of the habitable zone, it is not tidally locked. Okay, that should be all the data that you need to complete um, most of the lab. The last couple questions are related to the galactic habitable zone, and there is a, a separate simulation for that. I'm just gonna show it to you. You really don't need to be able to manipulate the simulation very much, but I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, what we have here is, of course, a picture of a, a galaxy, a spiral galaxy. Um, and we have the approximate location of where the sun would be in a galaxy like that in our Milky Way. And then we can move the location, uh, this ring, right? And what we're comparing are two competing effects, which impact the habitability inside a galaxy. The first is um, the one on the left here, which is uh, these catastrophic events. And as you get closer to the middle of the galaxy, you can see that the likelihood, the risk of these really bad things happening gets really, really high because there's just so many stars so close together. And as you get farther away, those risks go down. But the other effect is the abundance of heavy metals, which we call uh, the metallicity of the stars, right? And when you are inside the galaxy where it happens to be dangerous there's also very high metallicity and that's good when it comes to making planets because stars that have more metals uh form planets more on a, a more um frequently um and so as you get farther out where it's safer you actually get uh, fewer planets being formed because the metallicity of the stars is decreasing all right so those are the two competing effects that you're going to be uh, looking at for the last couple questions. All right, I think that's everything you need in order to complete the lab.